Hey guys, Joe Hildreth here from MyHeap.com. So today I'm going to do another Banggood review, and I try not to do these too often, but this one I actually requested. So I've asked Banggood to send me uh, two of these cameras. These are uh, HiCU HD IP cameras. They are supposed to be uh, 1080 uh, by 30 frames uh, IP cameras, uh, and we'll, we'll look at the specification on the Banggood website uh, in a minute. Uh, but I did ask them for two of these, right? And I have a reason uh, that I want to uh, test these that I think eventually would probably be a help to other YouTube creators, okay? And uh, so we're going to bring a camera in here and we're going to open these up and see what's uh, in the boxes. And then we'll uh, take a look at the uh, specifications on the website and we'll go from there. So recall I said that I asked for two of these and they did send two of them. They came in a plastic bag uh, just like this here. Uh, they were taped closed and, and that's it. So we're going to open one up. They're both the same. So let's open the case up of the box. We see that it comes shipped with um, this is a, a weather resistant connector for your Ethernet cable. Uh, comes with um, some wall anchors and an Allen wrench. And finally, the camera. And the camera. Again, is a high CU uh, HB612. So this is supposed to be a 1080p by 30 frames uh, camera supporting uh, RTSP uh, and power over Ethernet. But there's the ether, uh, there's the uh, Ethernet connector and an external power connector. Um, they did they do not ship with power supply. So keep that in mind if you order one of these, uh, you're not going to get any power supplies. Uh, looks like I got uh, some sort of uh, QI inspection tag um, and uh, some sort of card with you know its 30-day guarantee and then finally the the, uh, <laughs> the the software manual that's massive isn't it so it's about a quarter sheet of paper front and back um, they do not give you a CD with it. They, instead, they give you a couple URLs to download. Looks like there's some information here on hookup, um, installing the software, the local CMS, um, and that software configuration. But we're going to get into that. So right now, let's um, let's go to the Banggood website and see uh, what they say this camera is, and we'll go from there. Okay, so I'm over here at the Banggood um, webpage, and I've done a search on the HiCU HB612. And so here we see that uh, this is supposed to be a 1080p camera, uh, 2 megapixel, uh, power over Ethernet, mini bullet IP camera. Uh, also, uh, it says that it's OnVIF compliant uh, with peer-to-peer uh, -peer, um, networking, I guess is what the P2P means. The IP66 uh, waterproof outdoor thing, I think that has to do with, you know, it's uh, this is some sort of um, standard or something. I'm not real sure with that. Uh, IR means infrared, uh, cut night vision. I, I, I assume that that means it um, will automatically switch over to infrared LEDs once, uh, uh, once the uh, uh, amount of light available to the camera uh, isn't available. All right, so we see that it's uh, $29.99. Uh, it's marked to 49% off, so it's not a very expensive camera, but note that it does ship from uh, from uh, China. So, okay, here's the features. Okay, it says that it supports uh, OnVIF um, 2.0, uh, high-definition 1080p resolution, built IR uh, infrared cut filter, motion tracking, email alerts, Plug and play remote view via multi-platform. I'm not sure what that's supposed to mean, other than I'm guessing that it's uh, you can use or view the cameras uh, on multiple uh, systems, like maybe your phone or Windows or Linux or whatever. We'll get into that. Okay, so it says it has a waterproof metal case suitable for indoor/outdoor usage. So here's the 
specifications on it. But I think what I'm interested in here is this. Okay, so frame rates for the video stream says 1 to 30 frames per second. Um, the resolution is 1920 by 1080. Um, anywhere from 64 kilobits to 12 megabits uh, pixels per second. Looks like the uh, bit rate can be set to variable or constant. Um, the max resolution, okay, so it says that it's 1920 by 1080 by 30 frames per second. So we're going to check that. Um, it looks like that we have, through, at least probably through some software, we can adjust the brightness, contrast, saturation, that saturation, sharpness, and white balance. Uh, RJ45 uh, for connector interface. Uh, 12 volt DC power supply that's not included by the way uh, waterproof IP66 I have no freaking clue what that means but anyway we get down here and says that the package includes the uh, camera uh, the installation accessories and the manual so they're at least correct there okay well here's the crux of everything okay so I have uh, right here this is the TP link PoE switch that I bought. Uh, it has an uplink here, and then four PoE uh, devices can be attached, or they can be used as a regular switch. So this this uh, cable here is just feeding this computer that we're looking at right here that I'm using to record my video on. Okay, so um, so really, other than that, all you need is a network cable. Okay, and of course the camera. So rather than opening this one here up, let me grab another cable. Okay. And I'm just going to plug it into any port. And I'm going to plug it into the IP camera here. Okay, and if we look real close, I don't know if it pick up, that's very dim. It's negotiating power, and then now it's turned on. So now we're seeing activity, and if we look here, we see that there's activity on the switch. I think the next logical step is to take a look at um, their software that they recommend uh, we download. It looks like uh, it says the PC client NVS and an IPC tool, so whatever that means. So. Um, Let's uh, take a look at that software and we'll see how easy this is to set up and use. Okay guys, so um, according to the High CU instruction booklet, um, we're telling you to, uh, they, they give you a little indication here on how to hook up uh, the um, camera. Uh, of course, I've already showed you that. And then it says uh, open the CD and install device manager tool and then open the tool. Uh, search for the IP of the camera. Um, and then click web browse or input the IP address into the web browser and log in and select the video stream for view. The default username is admin with no password. So I'm guessing the that's the IPC tool. So I don't know. So I'm going to type this over here in the browser and let's see. Okay, so it looks like uh, www.icu.com slash images slash article Slash 2019 02 15. 2019 02 15. Um, T R E T R E C G E dot zip. So it's just a direct URL for download. Oh, guess what? All right. This one finally, this is the, the file that we put in, finally says, yeah, let's let's save that, right? And, okay, so that, that that's downloaded. 
I'll tell you what, while we're downloading, let's get this other one. Okay, it was www.hic.com slash CMS PC Client International dot zip. Let's see, what do we have? Oh, there it comes. This is from the other window too, by the way. So let's save that. I don't know why it takes so long for these files to come down. Okay, now that we got them, let's uh, let's carry on with the instructions here, and I'll speed that a bit of that stuff up. All right. Okay. So, all right. So this is the device manage that they talk about. Let's install it. Oh, this is interesting. Look at this. Um. Well, I'm an English speaker, and this makes no sense to me. So I guess English is not. Uh, not a language they offer. I, I'm going to assume this means next. Um, okay, where it's going to install it. Device manage, okay. So we'll let it install here. Looks like it uses Qt framework. Okay, I guess that's done. All right. So it's running. But you know what? This is all in Chinese. So look, guys, I'm sorry. You know, I, um, you know, I'm an, I'm a native English speaker. I, I don't speak Chinese. Uh, looks like the software um, is only available in Chinese or some other language that I, I didn't understand on the install. So let's. Uh, this is. Um, yeah, this is no good. I want to get rid of this because I, I don't know what. I don't know what any of that means. Let's install this one. Yep, do it to it. Ah, look, this one at least has an English translation. Okay, so next. Next. That's good. That's good. CMS. Okay, so it's called CMS. Alright, so let's uh alright, so this one at least it looks like I can bring over to the main screen. Now this here is covered in the instructions. Now it says that uh we want to go to system and device manager. Okay. So it brings it up over here. Um well, let's see. Let's delete that. And then delete that. Okay, so the first thing I want you to do is create a an area. We'll just call this I'm just I'm just calling it OBS or broadcast. And here we're gonna tell it to add a device and do an IP search to see if it finds our camera. Okay, so it seems to think that it's found it on 10.138. So we'll add that device and say OK. All right, and OK. So now, if I double click on that, I do have the camera. Hi. So it's a little, it's a little delayed, but you could expect that. The color's not too bad. Um, so, all right, so that was easy enough to use, and this is the digital, this is the recorder. So uh, we have, uh, see, we can do color correction. It looks like it looks like we can. Oh, yep. Yeah. Uh, all right, we can do contrast. We can do saturation. All right, uh, let's see here. And it looks like we can set it back to defaults. Okay. Uh, the system, device manager, local configurations. All right, so this is the DVR software. 
um, where you're going to record to and, and alarm settings and stuff like that. So I would say, hey, yeah, that that, that works. I, you know, I don't have any, um, that's easy enough, but I am really kind of disappointed that the device control software isn't, um, you know, isn't available in English. So I'm looking here, uh, let's see, what's advanced? Task, decode, tour, map, system, local config, remote config. I don't see, let's see, is, can I, and that's just showing what streams I can select how many um, camera views. So it looks like the software supports, uh, looks like here, up to 64 cameras. Uh, full view immediately stuck it over to my. Um, all right, well, I'm back. So it took the, I had to right click. Uh, when you go to full screen, it automatically shifts it to the, the primary display. So in my case, uh, that's the one I have OBS um, studio mode running on. And, and so that doesn't help me much. All right, so it looks like this works, but now my only question is, um, let's see, remote config. It says, please select a device. So it record snapshot. Okay, so it looks like uh, video motion. These aren't um, video loss, video blind motion. Okay, so it looks like you can um, let's see, let's look at the general, these are the system settings, okay, so, let's see here, system time, string, language, okay, so this is just, uh, okay, compression, it looks to me like it's set to H264, and I'm not seeing H265 available. So I'm not so sure that that's ava that's that's available. All right, so it does have 10, uh, 1920 by 1080 resolution, uh, or um, you can go down to 720, which is probably what I would use it as. Frames uh, per second looks like it defaults to 25. Okay, it does look like it goes up to 30. Uh, whether if you want variable or constant bit rate, and um, so it looks like you have uh, different levels. Well, let's see. Constant bit rate. Let's see if I jump that up. It doesn't change anything. Let's put it back where it was. All right, so variable bit rate, uh, better, uh, best. All right, so when you do the variable bit rate, it will, it will adjust the uh, bit rate of kilobits per second. Uh, frame interval okay so yeah it looks like uh, I'm just gonna cancel that uh, let's see network all right so we can do DH all right so it's DHCP enabled that's got an IP address that this got this address from uh, PF sense uh, if you have a standard uh, uh, wireless router or whatever it's gonna get it from that so okay so you know look I would say um, I would say this if um, if I were buying uh, I guess the cameras for um, you know some video recording uh, you know for security I think that they would work okay although I'm really disappointed in um, the interface it's not very clean it's sort of rough around the edges uh, it's going to take a little time to learn the uh, DVR portion of it, or here they're calling it the CMS. So I have other questions. Um, I believe the instruction said in the device manager that you can, uh, you know, select web browse, or you can just put the IP address of the camera uh, in in the uh, web browser. So tell you what, let me uh, get that set up and let's let's try that and see what happens. Okay, so here's Internet X. Explorer 11. So let's try going. Well, I tell you, 
I don't know. Let's see what this one says. Okay, so all right, so it's wanting to run an ActiveX module from an unverified publisher. Well, that would be from the camera, but I'm also seeing a download link here. Well, let's hit allow and see what happens. Well, it's just spinning. All right, so let's uh, let's hit this download link. Oh wait a minute! I want English. And we said admin. And no password, so log in. Okay, so maybe this is gonna work. All right, so it's asking for the bitrate type, mainstream or the extra stream. Well, we'll take the mainstream. That should be the highest one. And eh, there you go. All right, so it looks like it does work through the web browser. And... Let's see, other. Alright, so we can change the ratio. Right now, that's 4 by 3. That's 16 by 9. Okay, I'm alright with that. Well, let's see. This is not a PTZ camera, so I don't expect any of this stuff to work. Uh, color. Let's see, does this stuff work? Oh, yep. Yeah. So we can adjust the color and all that sort of stuff. What's this? Q. I think this one, okay. Ooh, ooh, that's kind of weird, isn't it? Uh, let's put it back to defaults. Okay. All right, so at the top we have uh, playback, log, device config, local config, log out. Let's see, what's in the local config? Uh, alarm settings, normal settings, alarm settings. System settings, record directory. Um, okay, about. All right, so that, all right. Let's look at the device configuration. And this should be. Oh, look, that's uh, it actually displays better than uh, it did in the CMS application. Uh, let's see, uh, although there's still a little bit of, of um layout issues okay so the intelligent alert um, the channel snapshots okay so all right what we're seeing here this is um, different settings you can set for uh, the camera you know if, if you have uh, video loss or you know you have um, blind spots I think you can program a blind spot let's see Looks like you can set a time that it doesn't record or it's blind. All right, so this uh, looks like settings. So this is general. Remember, we were in this one here in the CMS. Oh yeah, this. Uh, oh, and look, this is a little different. This is actually this one has a time zone where the other one didn't. So now this should be stuff on. See, I live in Central Time. Okay, awesome. Um, time form. Okay, okay. All right, so it's saved to the device. Now, this menu that we're looking at should be right on the camera, uh, software that we're modifying on the camera itself. Okay, so uh, the ACP enabled adaptive IP. We're going to turn that off. That's the address that it's received. Ah, here we go, media port. So 34567. I don't know what that is. Uh, 
the Onvif port is $88.99, and of course the HDT port is $80. Okay. Uh, let's cancel that. Let's uh, look, look at network services. Uh, is this a list of what it has? Let's see. IP filter. I double click. Oh, okay. So you can email. Okay. So here's where you would set up your email server for it to email you. Uh, here we go. R RTSP. All right. Well, it says that it's enabled and it's using port 554, which is the default port. Okay. All right, so um, without getting into a whole lot of this stuff, let's see what else we got here. Uh, account, this is probably um, accounts for the camera itself. Who can log in? Uh, yep, that's what, that's what it is. Uh, reboot, let's see, upgrade. All right, so, oh, interesting. Okay, so there's an online upgrade available. Let's cancel that real quick. And... Let's go back to config and let's go back to encoding. Ah, look at there. H265 uh, is available here. 264 isn't. That's kind of weird. So there's some discrepancies between the CMS software and the net surveillance web software, right? From um, accessing the camera directly um, oh here's another one looky here so we have available okay either 720 or 1080p uh, with h265 compression but only 25 frames per second I cannot it looks like I am forced to Variable bit bit rate only. I will just set that to better. Yes. Okay. And whether or not if you want the audio or the video. Okay. So. Now, um, the issue that I sort of had was um, I didn't know how to uh, connect to the RT. The real time uh, streaming stream, and uh, because everything that I tried just wouldn't work. So I done a little search on there, <clears throat> and I come across uh, this uh, high CU IP camera, right? This is, uh, you know, talking about the uh, generate the URLs for the camera so that you can see them. So here's the HB612. Let me scroll up, make sure you can see that. There's the HB612. Um, if you click on it and say, okay, well, what's the uh, what's the address? Well, ours was, uh, uh, or mine is uh, 10.140, right? And uh, it's admin. There's no password uh, on it. Channel 0 is fine. Generate. So here I've, um, maybe, I, okay, it's you can't really see it. But I want to copy this uh, string to the clipboard. And now if I fire off vlc media player and bring it over i can say media um, open network stream and i can um, paste that stream in there and say play as soon as the firewall says it's all right all right. All right. So there, there you go. We're right. getting. So there, you go. We're 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 getting. Okay, I just muted the VLC audio. All right. So um, the there is a little bit of a delay, uh, but we do have the live stream. You can see that there behind me. Uh, say hi, Joe. Say hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. How are you? <laughs> anyway, just kidding. Um, so this this stream here could be used right in OBS um, as a video source and that's really what I want to explore and if you're interested in that um, let me know okay well I want to wrap this up um, in a nutshell so to speak so the cameras are fairly inexpensive you know I think you can cut them on sale right now for 30 bucks or so 
I have to go back and look at the page. I don't remember. It's been a couple hours since uh, we we had been there, or since I've been there. Uh, so the uh, soft the the manual um, is uh, quite small. Uh, leaves uh, leaves a, a little uh, is left wanting. Okay. Um, the uh, two pieces of software that they suggest that you download. Um, the first one is only available in Chinese, so that's sort of a deal killer in a way. If it's uh, just the um, configured device control or device configuration utility, if that's all it is. But if that's all it is, we have a workaround um, with the Onvif uh, device manager that's available, and I showed you that a little while ago. Uh, the the um, CMS software, you know, the uh, digital video recorder software, DVR software, seems to work okay. There's some layout issues. Uh, it's a little kludgy. Uh, I noticed that um, the device configuration uh, in that versus the web uh, viewer um, is, they're, they're different, okay? Um, but the Onvif um, device manager that you can download uh, uh, really is pretty pretty thorough so the camera is in fact on the um, compatible okay so uh, they're right there it will it does depending on um, how you're streaming what you're streaming it is H264 uh, H265 compatible either uh, variable or um, constant bit rate um, so mostly all the uh, literature about the cameras uh, pretty accurate uh, the um, I had to find the streaming, uh, the string for real-time streaming protocol. I uh, actually found it on another website because uh, I couldn't get it to work. But now uh, I, that string that they used uh, does work. Now there might be some other way of finding that information uh, from the camera, you know, to to get that or whatever. Um, so, but I just haven't maybe haven't spent enough time. So my um, overall grade for this product is probably a B minus, right? Only because I think that if uh, it's going to be available to English speaking or other speaking individuals, that it should those language packs ought to be available for it. Okay, um, in this day and age, there's really no excuse for that. Um, the software, uh, while functional, it, it does function. Um, there there are some layout issues um, uh, at least you know with the way it appears and, and how things are laid out but it does work and you uh, do have color correction and all kinds of this is not a PTZ camera in other words you know you can't uh, zoom and focus and move and all that stuff uh, this is a very basic camera um, so for home surveillance I think it's worth it um, if you are willing to work around uh, the software issues so uh, that's my review of this camera. If you got any questions, uh, please consider, uh, you know, or please put them down there in the comment section. I'll answer any question that I can. If you're interested in using this uh, camera in OBS, um, I will uh, show that. And probably in a near uh, video, I'm just going to do a demo video of uh, uh, using, you know, two camera angles um, from these cameras. And OBS. That's initially what I asked uh, to uh, to review them for to see if they'd work for that. Uh, but this video is carried on too long, so it have to be another video. Um, like I said, if you're interested in that, let me know. Um, so other than that, hey, if uh, these videos are helpful to you or you find them entertaining or useful, please consider liking, subscribing, and sharing. And other than that, have a blessed day.